Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mm, mm -hmm. Wow, what an absolutely great day it is. Wow, you come out here. It's pretty mild today. You know, it's not too, like, blistering hot, but it's not, like, super cold either. I put my sweater on because it kind of looked gray and maybe a little rainy. But when I came out, it was actually, you know, quite mild. It's, you know, but, but nice. Nice enough. Still okay to wear a sweater, I'll tell you what. But the birds are just singing up a beautiful, sweet song. It is just amazing. Here, take a look. Take a look at how beautiful it is over there. The reason I'm not sitting over there this morning is because it is hazy. The light coming into the camera here, it just washes it all out. So I thought, okay, I'll just change spots. That's what I'll do. Guys, something big is happening right now. And what it is, is you got the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And they are going to be adding spot Bitcoin to their platform. This is a massive, massive deal. Now, I'll tell you why right here. Mm. Of course, we already know that the uh, CME has been, you know, involved with, of course, futures for Bitcoin and stuff like that. But a spot Bitcoin is going to make it possible for a major amount of these hedge funds and institutional investors to literally get into this space, meeting every regulatory requirement that they need. Most spot ETF, you know, not the ETF, but most spot Bitcoin trading in that happens in the wide world, believe it or not, on Binance. Binance is the biggest one. But when you're talking about the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, it's the world's largest futures platform. And they are already dealing in Bitcoin futures, but now they're going to be dealing with spot Bitcoin that is massive, massive, because we're not just talking about the exchange traded funds here. We're not just talking about ETFs. We're talking about hedge funds and institutional investors being able to literally go right through and purchase Bitcoin directly themselves, not by buying ETFs and the ETFs have to hold the underlying asset. This is going to be a big deal. And why is such a big deal? Because, guys, we have been talking about institutional rails in this space for a long time. Now, of course, Bitcoin is the granddaddy of them all, right? I mean, Bitcoin out there right now, I think almost half the market cap for the entirety of crypto is Bitcoin. And I have nothing against Bitcoin. By the way, that's, that's my own. I have nothing against Bitcoin. It's the Bitcoin maxis that just think it's there, there can be only one kind of thing. Nothing against Bitcoin. But I do believe that this is going to open the door, just like the ETFs have opened the door to, you know, potential other ETFs, the Bitcoin ETF, opening the door to other ETFs. This is going to open the door for spot trading on the CME for a lot of other assets other than just Bitcoin. Of course, Ethereum would probably be right behind there. And it would not surprise me in the least little bit if we get our decision out of Judge Torres by the end of August here, July, August or whatever, and this whole space for, you know, XRP is all resolved in that, that we would see XRP on the CME down the road at some point. Absolutely would not, would not surprise me one bit. The world is adopting crypto massively. Now, why this is so significant? is because it was not that long ago where none of these institutions would even think of touching Bitcoin. Not a one, but boy, have the world opened their arms up to Bitcoin, to all these other digital assets. And we can see the volume that we see trading. When you're talking literally hundreds of billions of dollars a day just in XRP alone, and of course, all the other ones, you add all that in there. Guys, that is not retail. I mean, that is not retail pushing those prices. Just think about it. Do you think our little hundreds or a few thousand dollar purchases, this and that, are really moving Bitcoin to the hundreds of billions of dollars a day, XRP to the hundreds of billions of dollars a day? No, guys, it is not. It's already institutions and big money players that are out there moving this space. Well, guys, you know, that right there should tell you what's going on in the future. I mean, realistically, I mean, I, I, you know, for a lot of people I talk to, you know, they're looking for an absolute certainty. They're not really adjusted to what risk is, right? They don't know how to 
navigate risk because they're very, very emotionally attached to it. Now, I get it. I understand that because that's exactly where Judy and I started for sure. And, you know, we were tiptoeing in like anybody would, I suspect, if you've never had exposure to it before. But the thing is this. When people say, hey, you got to take the emotion out of it, it does not mean you are not going to have feelings. It just means you're not making decisions based on those feelings. Now, having said that, consider that a lot of these big players, these big whales, they're out there by an absolute massive chunks of it. In fact, I was reading an article earlier on this morning where someone has gone out there, institutional big player, big whale, bought 60 million XRP in current market. 60 million, gobbled it up. Now that's over $30 million they've thrown on the line. Now do you think that these big time, global, institutional investors, massive whales, do you think that they're going in and they're buying these assets just so that they can see a big loss? You know, that they're you know absolutely terrified about what's going on in the future and whether or not, you know, that, oh my goodness, Ripple's not gonna win the case or any of that. Do you really believe that that's what's in their mind? Not in your life. And furthermore, to speak to that, do you think that's what's in Ripple's mind? Because most of us, I'm sure, if we were dealing with a massive lawsuit like that, that would be our primary sole focus, no doubt, till that thing got resolved. But you know what Ripple has done? Complete opposite. Sure, they've addressed it and this and that, but they've gone out there in the wide world and boy, have they ever built, built, built partnership after partnership after partnership. You know, and they've acquired some big time assets as well, right? Standard Custody, Metaco, all these other ones and stuff like that. And they they literally came out and said, hey, we got a billion dollar cash war chest and we're gonna employ it into this space and really, really, you know, see some, you know, big time changes come about. They wanna be market leaders in a powerful way. And with that, they're setting up their own stable coin you know, to compete in the stablecoin market, which is worth trillions of dollars right there. It is something else, really. And that's the way I kind of look at it. Because most of us, and, and, and a lot of us, aren't going to be able to be whales like these guys are, not on your life. And so, you know, what we end up doing, what I end up doing, I should say, is this capacity, is I try to follow their behavior and not their advice. These are the same folks, right? That back just, what, just a few years back, they were saying, oh my goodness, it's rat poison squared. Stay away from it. Don't touch it. Keep it, you know, on and on and on. Meanwhile, they were setting themselves up and accumulating it, having trading desks and everything. And now look at, boy, it's arms open. You even got Larry Fake himself out there, who, like I said yesterday, has come out and said, listen, these digital assets, you know, they can represent a flight to safety, you know, in a crashing dollar environment and it's going to be the next evolution you know the tokenization of securities next evolution of the markets when it wasn't that long ago larry fink was singing a song saying well none of the clients that we deal with ever want to touch bitcoin and and oh well you know it, it's, it's really you know there's nothing really there it, it's nothing it's virtual what and on and on and on Guys, they were just playing up a song. They knew exactly what this space represents. They know it represents the future. And what have they been doing? They've been accumulating like crazy. And now they're getting the infrastructure all laid the way they want it. And of course, they are going to, you know, it's all about control, right? They want to be the ones control. They control these current markets. Do you think that they want to give that up? For a future of a market that they have no control over not in your life they are going to this is why you can't they're going to do whatever they can do right to keep the power they have already and that's just the way it is that's how markets work now behind all of these major massive conglomerates who are the real puppet masters right the central banks the central banks that's where it all starts and ends it starts with the debt market, which is literally funded by the central banks because every time that they create a new dollar, what are they doing? They're creating more liability. That's exactly right, more debt. In fact, that's why I say, like I love what Augustine Carson said when he's a general manager of the Bank of International Settlements. He says, all these notes, $100 note, 50 note, 20 note, and all that, all they are are, are you know liability instruments. That's exactly what he called them. 
every dollar that's issued you know by any central bank is just a promissory note right back to the central bank and what happens well they consolidate power don't they by inflating the market to the point where it's absolutely wiped out they consolidate it and they end up owning you know and controlling all of these various markets that's exactly what's going on and of course their tentacles are up here and then you know they get all their little you know they're playing pulling all the strings all these various corporations and indices and markets and all that you know they're the puppet masters that's what's going on they're pulling the strings so do you think that the central banks are genuinely against this digital asset space no they're not they're in the process of evolving right into it but boy do they ever want to have absolute control and i've heard it said this and i do agree with this as well if you think that these central banks are going to give up the mon control of the monetary systems and things like that, I'm telling you what, they will literally roll the tanks out on the streets before they ever allow that to happen. And that is a fact, Jack, right there. It's all about control, guys. It's all about control. And once you understand how the game is played, there's no change in the game. At least at this point, it does not look like there's any possibility of change in the game. But once you know how the rules are played and how they play the game, well, you can learn to outsmart them or at least benefit with them and not have them working against you, right? And that kind of thing. And that's where we say, hey, we don't follow their advice. We follow their behavior and we take our pennies and we stack them next to their dollars. And eventually maybe our pennies turn into some dollars and stuff like that. That's kind of like the, the thinking I've got about it. But guys, I'm telling you, you are watching the future unfold right before your very eyes. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange taking on spot Bitcoin, that's going to take a huge you know, market share bite, you know, right out of Binance there because, you know, all these hedge funds and all these, you know, big banks and stuff like that that couldn't touch it before because of all their fiduciary responsibility, the way in which they were doing it, now can directly go out there and buy Bitcoin. And it won't be too much longer, I don't believe, until we see other assets on the CME. It's a matter of time. It's a, it's a when, it's not an if. And that's how I look at it. And I'll tell you what, what an exciting time to be alive. What an amazing transition period. Now, yeah, there's something coming. And it's going to hurt a lot of folks when this whole thing implodes. But we have been out there and trying to give people a heads up of how they can protect themselves and build a hedge you know, from the onslaught that's coming. But this is, the, most people are totally oblivious to it, right? You know, they don't, you know, or they're not out there seeing what's, what's coming down the pike. And so, of course, they're not prepared. Now, think about, remember the movie, The Big Short, of what was going on there when we were dealing with the big crash there, the financial, the great financial collapse, late 2008 and 2009? Well, the thing is this. There were people in the know that kind of figured out what was going on behind the scenes and that something was off. And, you know, they went out there and they were able to benefit from it. Now, the broader market, if they had known how this whole Ponzi scheme system was being set up, do you think they would have kept all their 401ks and all that into that? Not on your life. Boy, I'll tell you what. And how many people were absolutely decimated by that, you know, whole deal? And, a lot, and who really paid the piper with all that? Very few people. I think there was one guy over in Europe that worked for UBS that spent any jail time at all. The rest of them skated. They walked and yet and got bailed out big time. While the average person, wow, they were collapsed. They were crushed. Families living literally out of their vehicles. I mean, Judy and I, that impacted us in a big, big way. And stuff like that with a house that we had owned and things like that. And I'll tell you what, you know, this is where you try to get out there and you try to share as much information as you can so people can be prepared. And what happens? Whoa, boy, I'll tell you what. Do all the fear, uncertainty, and doubtsters, the fudsters, get out there and just start dumping it down. You believe that these are real people? I'm telling you guys, some of these people, if they are real people, are being paid to do it. Most of the time. You're dealing with a lot of bots and this and that, and it's in there. They do not want you. They do not want me to be in a place where we can absolutely avoid catastrophic results. They don't want us to clue in. They're not ready for that yet. When they want us to clue in is when they've got all the infrastructure in place and they're laying out the cards and all this and that, and they're guaranteed to win. That's when they want you and I coming to the table, right? 
It's like going to Vegas. You know, try and beat the house. It is rare, rare, rare. And even when you do win, what do they do? Well, they keep you in there, don't they? They give you, hey, we're going to upgrade you to the executive suites. We're giving you free steak dinners and all that. Da, 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 da. Just to keep you there as long as possible so you can spend everything you won. And on top of that, maybe even some more so by the time you leave, they've gotten everything back from you. And on top of that, maybe just a little bit more. And you're going home with a whole lot less in your pocket. And if you do go home with your winnings, I've seen this in Vegas. I know people that this happened to. They send you vouchers for free weeks where you can come back and on and on and on. Stay in the executive suites, all that. We'll pick you up at the airport in a limo and everything else and on and on and on. It's all about keeping you snagged into the system. And that's how they play this game. That's the way I look at it, I'll tell you. Guys, like I say, let's be sharp as tacks. Let's beat them at their own game. Let's be ready for when this happens because we can see it happening right before our very eyes. I'll tell you what. Well, guys, I sure hope you're going to have an amazing, fantastic day. And until later on, when we have a tremendous, a really great video for you, have a fabulous one and take care.